So today we're talking about me building a big four foot by eight foot enclosure for Simon, my ornate monitor lizard. Now, if you recall a few months ago, we did one for a Norman, my black and white Argentine tegu, and his turned out awesome. Really cool live plants in it, lots of lots of substrate, and he's very happy and it had a cool ramp with a basking platform. Simon, I can't really do the same thing I did for Norman because Simon's very destructive. If I put live plants in there, he's just gonna destroy him. And he's also, he's more high strung than Norman. Norman's really mellow, he's a star of my show he goes to just about every program i do he's a huge huge hit with kids he's been pet by thousands of kids at this point he's really mellow i can basically do whatever i want with him simon on the other hand is not going to a single program ever in fact i think i've only held him twice and both times were kind of forcibly one putting him in his temporary enclosure and two taking him from his temporary enclosure and putting him into this one so he's not a big fan of the handling he is fairly ish friendly with me he's your typical kind of ornate nile attitude where he's huffy and tail whippy and he's not really bitey he's never really bit me out of like aggression or anything he's bit me a couple times because he missed the food but he's pretty good with me in his old enclosure i got him to the point where he could climb up onto my shoulder comfortably kind of lick my ear lick uh, my hair and everything and he'd go back into his enclosure but now since i moved him into this one it's a completely different story but we'll go over that so to start this off what i did and this is going to be very similar to what i did for norman's enclosure so if you're looking at how to build an animal plastics enclosure you're in luck because it's very easy but i'm going to go step by step anyways so what we're going to do first is we did a bottom we did a frame now this is not included with the animal plastics enclosure we built this just so we could put it on wheels so i could move it around the reptile room if i wanted to so with this frame we basically just took a bunch of two by fours and we cut them so that it would be four foot wide exactly and then just eight feet long obviously because they're two by eights now with this what we did was in the middle we cut them so they were 16 inches apart we drilled them in and that is going to give you a lot of nice kind of support for all the weight in this enclosure because there's going to be a lot of substrate in this enclosure there was a bunch of dirt and there's also heavy rocks and logs and a fairly big water bin so all of that weight had to be accounted for so we needed to make this very very sturdy and then what we did is we put the wheels in now these wheels i think they were graded for 250 pounds each so these were some really heavy duty caster wheels and two of them had locks so that if i wanted to lock it in place so it wouldn't roll granted with the weight of this thing it wasn't going to be rolling anyways but just in case so we had to do pilot holes for the wheels and then we bolted those in and then boom we had a nice kind of frameworked bottom with some wheels on it that we could kind of move around now what we did was we took a four by eight sheet of plywood and just drilled that down into it and we had to square it up a little bit so you had to use a wrench and stuff to kind of work it into place so with our base done that we built ourselves then it was time to actually build the enclosure and we built the enclosure on this base so it kind of gave us some room to work so we weren't directly on the ground so that was nice too now animal everything you need animal plast is going to send you they send you silicone to kind of seal the inside corners with they also send you all the screws you're going to need to put this together and then some to give you some extras too now the instructions they send you are awesome they kind of go step by step exactly what you need to do what side goes where everything what kind of what order to do things then so i mean you don't really need this kind of video for it but if you're someone kind of like me where it helps visualizing and visually seeing what you're doing then here you are so this enclosure what you did first is you're going to put the bottom down you put the bottom down and then you're going to attach the sides and you're going to screw the sides on the bottom only and then what you're going to do after you have kind of this weird like elongated u is then you put the back on now i'm saying this from memory so i'm hopefully i'm remembering it right but since i built two of these enclosures hopefully it's kind of like locked in there so once you got the weird kind of elongated u and that back on it then you're also going to put the front on it and then once you screw those in now mind you you need to pay close attention attention to the instructions because they're going to say you don't screw certain sides into certain sides once you do that you put the top on and then once you have it it looks like it's done but you're not done because then what you need to do when you have a almost done looking enclosure is you need to flip the entire thing over and then you are going to screw the bottom in the bottom you need to screw in upside down like this so the weight kind of keeps everything together you screw the bottom in and then when you're done with this you flip it right side back up so then you boom your bottom is fully enclosed you have your walls and your back kind of on and you, what you need to do next is you need to take that top back off and then you have these three supports that you need to put in they're going to connect the front to the back walls and what they are you have two shortened ones kind of just bars and then you have this long kind of upside down u that goes in the middle and that one's going to connect all the way to the floor so you screw those in 
you screw the top back on and then you're going to go around fully screwing in the sides and everything like that and then your enclosure is basically done for the most part and then what comes next is you have to seal it so you have to climb in take that silicone and you're going to seal the entire inside rim now that it's all screwed up nice and tight together you're going to seal that with silicone and I, what i did is i actually took the silicone and i went up about two and a half feet up each wall in the corners just so that that ceiling would kind of go up all the way where there was going to be substrate and you need to let this cure for a week you need to let this air out because silicone is not really a nice thing to breathe in so you need to let it fully air out so there's no smell left over because trust me there's going to be a smell in this basically fully enclosed enclosure you're going to be able to smell it so you need to let that air out as best you can I actually put a fan in there and I kept the window open now it's not enough that if the fumes get out into the reptile room it was going to kill any of the other animals but if you put an animal immediately in there sealed it up with glass and everything that wasn't going to be a good decision and while that was curing I made a basking platform just like I did with Norman's enclosure and all that was was just some two by fours that I made the legs I took a piece of wood and I used that for the actual shelf itself I used some two by fours to kind of reinforce it a little bit and then I sealed it with dry lock which is just kind of picture it like a ceiling paint almost if you want to think about it that way and it's a ceiling paint it's usually what I seal the inside of my wooded enclosures with like you can see with Levi's here and it holds up pretty well you just have to make sure you use enough layers of the stuff and I just did a couple layers on this because it doesn't need to last a lifetime I mean it's just a basking shelf and we're gonna be moving all of this in a few years anyway so it's not a super permanent thing so if it ends up molding or something a couple years down the line I'll just make a new one it was pretty cheap so it didn't need to last forever but it did need to be able to support a monitor lizard's weight and the abuse that his claws and everything else can kind of dish out so once the dry lac was all good and aired out and dry then with that all good to go with the kind of sealant inside the enclosure all good to go it was time for the hardest part of this build which was moving in all the dirt for Norman's enclosure I think I used something like 40 45 bags of substrate something like that and for <laughs> Simon it was almost that much it was a lot of bags of topsoil wash play sand I used some peat moss used a little bit of eco earth coconut core there's a lot of stuff mixed in and then on top of all that which I had to lug down the stairs and then through here and then into the reptile room into the corner where he's at it was a big workout but on top of that you had to take a rake and then you have to mix it all together because you don't want the sand and the soil and all that stuff separated you want it all mixed together so it holds burrows holds humidity really well and he's definitely been burrowing it and it holds burrows very very well so he's definitely enjoying that part of it and then after all that I went outside and I took some really 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 big rocks that I found and I kind of stacked those in there I took some really big cut off logs that my brother my brother cuts trees so we had some of those lying around so I took those and lugged those down here that was really heavy and that way I could give him things to kind of climb on for him to kind of wear his nails down on the rock to dig under and things like that with all that done the last part was the glass now I had built Norman's enclosure first and that was months ago and I've had this stuff sitting down here since probably Probably beginning of March end of February so I took all of the glass doors because each enclosure gets two sliding glass doors and I put them off to the side here tucked them away nice and special to make sure I didn't break them so I got Norman's cage all done and I got all the way down to or Simon's and Simon's was just about done and I got one glass door in and then the second one I go to put it in and I drop it and the pfft, shatters like an idiot after all this time the last thing literally the last part because Norman's enclosure is done this is the last part of Simon's enclosure one glass door and I I drop it trying to put it in and the whole corner goes away so then you had to kind of think because I'm mean, like Simon is ready to go and do his new enclosure I had a lot of stuff I had to move stuff around and stuff because I got a lot of plants so I needed this to be done I needed Simon in here so you had to kind of think on the spot and improvise which worked out pretty well if I do say so myself what we did was we actually made a door out of the PVC panel that came at the bottom of the pallet so when the pallet got delivered into our yard we had all of the kind of cage parts stacked on top of it and then you had two little PVC panels on each side and you had one on the bottom so that the pallet didn't imprint on any of the uh, the PVC that was above it and we took that scrap piece that they just stapled on there just for protection we took that scrap piece we measured it out we cut it down to a perfectly fitting sliding door and that is what we used we put that fit it in the track and we made it so it could slide now PVC has a lot of give in it obviously that glass doesn't have so what we had to do is we had to build a wooden kind of frame slash door handle where he couldn't push it from the outside but I could still move it so we made something that works pretty good and you're going to be looking at it right now so Honestly, all things considered, it worked out. They're going to be sending me a new glass panel door once 
kind of everything kind of settles down. So luckily this is holding just fine. So it's not a huge dire situation where I need to like get one immediately because no hardware store in the area. And I called and checked just about everywhere cuts glass to this big of a size. This door is four feet tall by little over four feet wide. This is a massive piece of glass and it is, it is heavy and it's just not something that really any hardware store was able to do. They didn't do anything, I think above two or three feet. So luckily it worked out. Simon's moved in. He has not been able to break out yet. So with all that done, the enclosure done, the kind of improvised door that we did built and all ready to go. The last part was to move him in. Now it, there was no easy way to get him from his temporary enclosure into this one. There was, it was impossible. So the only thing, only option I I had was to throw a towel over him and force handle and force grab him and secure him and then put him in his new enclosure which obviously he was not going to like and it was going to break a lot of the trust that i've been trying to build up with him over the past few months where i've been kind of tong feeding him starting to target train him getting to the point where he's comfortable me reaching in to change out the water without him running away or diving for my hand thinking it's food getting him to kind of get used to smelling my glove, letting me pet him. He was even coming out on my shoulder to sniff my hair and stuff like that. So that was a lot of work I was throwing down the drain on him, but I had no other option. I knew he was gonna be a lot happier in this enclosure. So I had to move him into this. And the only way was to throw a towel over him. So with everything built and him moved in, why don't we go in and take a look at it? Now, like I said, you're not the biggest fan of me right now. I've been trying to work with him sitting in front of his enclosure, letting him see me and stuff. And he'll sit out for a little bit, but I don't know how he's gonna to react to the tripod and stuff. So hopefully it's not just you looking at footage of me sitting there talking about him. Hopefully he's out for it, but we'll see how it goes. And if any of you have any questions or comments watching this video about an animal plastics enclosure you're going to be getting, feel free to shoot them down in the comments and also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Like I'm going to eventually be doing more videos with him, target training him and trying to get him reacclimated to me because working with a big lizard is not like trying to socialize a small lizard. <laughs> trying to socialize a blue tongue skink or even a dwarf monitor is nothing like trying to socialize a big, almost four foot ornate monitor that's going to get a lot bigger so anyway so hopefully he'll be out but if not you'll see some cool b-roll footage of him in the enclosure so why don't we go in and i'll take a look at what i've done So this is Simon's new enclosure. Now, when I started to uh, film this, he was right here, but as soon as I sat down, he, he darted. So <laughs> he doesn't 100% trust me or really even 40% trust me since I had to move him into this enclosure. He did not like that experience, but I think overall he likes the enclosure. He's definitely digging a lot more. He's been digging tunnels underneath. He's got hides under the water bowl. He's got a cave under these rocks right here under the logs. He's got his normal kind of flipped over plastic bin that he hides under. And then he just, he's out, he's out basking quite a bit, especially in the last few weeks when he's kind of gotten more acclimated and confident in this space. Now, with the rocks, how I stacked them, I made it so that even if he tried to dig out underneath them, they wouldn't collapse onto him, which you need to do whenever you're having big lizards that are going to dig a lot, especially your rock and ground iguanas, your monitor lizards. You got to make sure this stuff is stable so that it doesn't fall down onto him and crush them. But he's getting more used to it. He's uh, been out here basking and I've been able to sit down and kind of sit next to him and him not freak out and run away immediately. I think it's because I set up the tripod and the light and everything 
everything. I don't think he liked all that because he he sees that he knows the difference. So he kind of bolted as soon as he was like, okay, something's off, and he ran. So I can't blame him for it. it. Just means that unlike the Norman video, you guys won't be able to see him right here as I'm talking about him. But yeah, it's just it's a really nice enclosure. I really like it. I mean, I just like the look of this sleek black PVC. It just I think it looks kind of more professional than the wooden enclosures. You can't see it, but I have a big wooden enclosure that I built myself right here, and it's using a lot of OSB wood, so it's not exactly that pretty on the eyes and I'll do a video at some point kind of comparing the enclosures I built myself versus the ones I ordered off animal plastics but I'm gonna I actually just ordered two more enclosures so we've got one coming for Levi my green iguana he's gonna be getting a PVC enclosure because his wooden enclosure that I built it's not exactly going to last super much longer, so hopefully it lasts for the four or five months till I get this one. But anyway, so Levi the Green Iguana is getting one, and then a new mystery animal is going to be getting a PVC enclosure. I'm not talking about that animal yet, but there is an enclosure coming for it. So that'll be coming in the future, so make sure you subscribe. But yeah, so I mean, PVC, I mean, these animal plastics enclosures, aside, the one big con is the long lead time just the insane four to six month wait and i mean there's really not much they could have done but now that they actually moved into their new facility i think they did back in may they said they're gonna be able to double their output once this whole kind of corona thing shakes out because of all that i mean that's just kind of messing everything up but right now they're still kind of just a strap for time and people but once this whole thing is done I, they're going to be able to push cages out a lot faster so those two cages i'm getting are supposed to be coming in november maybe i'll get lucky and they come a little bit sooner than that but even even with that big con it's still worth it I mean they're super easy to put together the instructions everything laid it right out they're really lightweight so they're really easy to move because like I said the one process involved flipping it upside down which is a two-person job for an enclosure this size but it still wasn't super super hard and then also just they're very easy to clean they're really nice to look at they, the animals look really nice inside of them and then the glass I broke I broke the one glass panel but they're gonna be shipping me a new glass panel with that other one so I mean all in all, the customer support, everything was really, really good. So, I mean, outs besides that one big con, it's still, it's a really, really nice deal. It costs about the same, honestly, as it did to build one myself with all the wood and the wood sealer and everything. I'm going to definitely be doing more of these in the future. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys like seeing the monitor lizard. And an animal I don't really get to show off often because I cannot bring him to programs. And I can't even bring him upside to kind of take him outside like I do with Levi or walk around the house like the taggies do. He's really kind of his own beast but i can't do any of that so now this is my first video with him and i'll maybe i'll probably do some more content in the future i am target training him so i'll probably do a video on that in the future because he was target trained in his old enclosure but kind of as soon as i put him into this everything kind of just broke loose anything i had been working well on him with it's just he's just kind of instinct takes over and he's like no get away from me so we're slowly kind of building that trust again slowly kind of working up to the point where i can open the doors and he's not freaking out and darting away and things like that so stay tuned for more monitor videos and hopefully you guys enjoyed this like i said two more of these are coming in november so we'll be definitely be doing one all about the new animal and also all about levi coming if you want we are on patreon you can support us for little as five dollars a month and you can get cool perks like early access to youtube videos and sneak peeks of new animals we're getting like that new animal that's going to be going in that pvc enclosure in a few months make sure you like the video if you learned something or you just enjoyed the video thanks for tuning in and i'll catch you later